Hi. Hello, Jenny. How are you today? Hi, Laura. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very, very good. Just enjoying the sunshine and getting sunburn in my face. <laughs> You've got snow. You've got sun. Yeah, and that's true. Up and we've got snow in Durham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I shouldn't complain. Well, I'm very, very excited about having this conversation with you, basically, because we have spoken before and we are both passionate about networking and meeting people. And I think you have a lot of things to share. And I want to start asking you, what's the strategic networking? Because I have seen you, you talk about it and I'm like, yeah, what is it? <laughs> So for me, networking is kind of the, the forgotten um, art of one of the forms of marketing. And we give so much attention as businesses, as individuals to looking at our social media strategies, PR strategies, advertising, general marketing. Yet no one thinks about networking in a strategic manner and they don't give mm -hmm. it the same amount of attention that it deserves, mm -hmm. really. Yet everyone knows how important having a strong network is and the power of relationships in business, in, um, in all aspects of life, really. And I think if lockdown's taught us anything, it's how important relationships are to us as people, as business owners. Mm -hmm. So I am really passionate, like you said, about networking in general, um, but specifically about getting people, businesses, to think strategically about networking um, and that came about I've been networking for over 15 years hosting running networking organizations as a full-time networker for a while um, and during my experience I've created a networking ecosystem that Durham Uni's done a few years of academic research into and that ecosystem um, allows me to now help and empower businesses to understand where they need to be networking in order to achieve their networking objectives. And right. I think that's probably the first point when it comes to creating a networking strategy is a lot of people attend events and don't really have a purpose for them. They go to them because maybe they've been told they should or it's something that people in their industry do, but they don't actually have specific goals and objectives for their networking activities. So they can never really gauge and improve on that return on investment from activities right. and that's what being strategic in networking is about it's about ensuring that you're getting the best ROI on your activities um because they cost they cost you time which is so valuable they cost money they cost resources um and you need to be sure that you are getting in return what it is you aim to get from those from those networking events so, Jenny, would you say that it's important before a networking event to say or try to calculate, okay, this is the return of investment that I would like to get from this networking event, and the way I'm going to do it is by speaking with this type of people and then following up? So, how, how, how does it work? Yeah. The return on investment from networking is really difficult, and that's probably why historically businesses and individuals, we haven't really thought about it or don't measure it because the direct sales one of the most valuable things that you get from networking is access to knowledge access to information the generation of innovative ideas from conversations and um, so all these things you can't put a number against it so mm -hmm. it's really difficult to all, almost gauge that ROI from specifics however as a whole I think it's really important to know what your outputs are for networking so what time expenditure you're putting into it whether it's for you your staff your teams and um, what costs membership costs travel costs um, you know the cost of actually attending events seminars if it's conferences the overnight stays the travel it all adds up so understanding first of all what your expenditures are what your outputs are and then looking at what your objectives from attending these events are actually like what do you want to get in return and taking into consideration that yes it could be sales if that's the type of business that you're in but there's also a lot of um the additional benefits of networking that uh, you can't always put a number against and as long as you're happy and you understand that what you're getting back in return can't always be measured in the same sense as a sales funnel could then it makes it easier to understand where that costs go in and it's generating new ideas it's building new relationships accessing information and knowledge to allow you to make strategic decisions elsewhere in your business and those things you can't often put a price tag on so yeah. it's understanding what 
your spending, yes, but when it comes to ROI, it's not always going to come back in the form of um, cash for cash. It's almost a, a different kind of, of return from that investment. Oh, okay, different currency. Okay, so for an entrepreneur, of course, entrepreneurs start with not having a lot of money. <laughs> How it's the best way to sort of like optimize those relationships and what would be the best, I don't know, like suggestion for an entrepreneur at this moment with the lockdown and all that to start going around doing networking. So, and I'll explain my question. One of the things that I'm doing regarding networking is yes, going to networking events. However, now aren't as effective because I don't know with whom to speak to, but mm -hmm. also I'm trying to go on LinkedIn and sort of like just look into with whom I could speak to. Yeah, how, how, how should I be going around that process you know like do you have any hacks or any tips yeah, yeah so when it comes to navigating which networking events you should be attending a really quick way to understand whether or not it's going to be appropriate for you is looking at the topic or the theme of the event that you're attending potentially so if there's a speaker what's the theme what they're going to be speaking about and who's going to be attracted to that event who's going to be drawn to it and if your target market is the type of person that will be drawn to that event then you should be going to that event so if you want to network for knowledge for example if you want to expand your knowledge and learn from other entrepreneurs go to events that are designed for entrepreneurs if that's one of your networking objectives to create a support network with other founders for example and um, if you're launching a tech business and you wanted to build a network of peers who are doing the same go to events that are designed to attract those kind of people so looking at the topics are really easy way to navigate and um, I'd also say when it comes to you know looking at where you should network look at where the host of the event is geographically based so even though events are all remote if your target market is to make sales or build relationships with potential customers in Manchester for example there's no point spending time going to remote events that are hosted by organizations based in London because those events are going to naturally attract the host's network because they're going to be promoting themselves and therefore the host network will be more likely to be delegates. So looking at where the host space is a really good indicator of geographically where in the world um, the delegates are going to be coming from because that's where their network will be. So that's a really quick way of navigating around online. Um, and then obviously in person, if you're going to physically go to events, then you need to take into consideration, again, who you want to be building relationships with and why and what you want to get from them. And then looking at the topic of the event, the host of the event. And also, even though as entrepreneurs, we, we don't have much money when we're starting out and like we've got a lot of expenses, rather than if you're wanting to build relationships with potential customers, for example, and your price point is... 10 grand an average sale um, then you're not necessarily going to be able to meet those people um, at a free to attend networking event and invest in slightly into more established networks or networks that come with a price tag yes it's an expense but rather than spending a whole lot of time going to networking events where you're not going to meet the people that you want spend a little bit of money and know that when you are spending the time going to events, it's to meet the right people in order to achieve your objectives. If that's what your objectives are. Yeah, no. And I think it's a matter of also doing the correlation between time equals money. So it's at the end of the day, yeah. if you're going to places that are not sort of like giving you any return on the people that you want to meet, it's like you're spending money at the end of the day, right? Like on, on, on what you would spend on you. Yeah. And okay. So yeah, yeah. I want to go a little bit into the, actual networking process because sometimes it's very very hard to start a conversation so what would you say are sort of like the best practices in order to start a conversation do you introduce yourself or like you start pitching you know sort of like i have heard a lot of thoughts about the elevator pitch do you start with that mm -hmm. or do you start with something different I think it depends on the situation for one. If you were online and it was a remote networking event and the whole thing was that you were to go and then you were taking turns doing an elevator pitch, then having an elevator pitch nailed, ready to go, perfect. 
But if you're just meeting someone either online or in person and it's more uh, networking, getting to know each other, the best thing that you can ever do is ask questions and genuinely want to, you know, if you can go into a networking situation with the idea that you want to learn from these people that you're mm -hmm. going to meet, then you will ask better questions. You'll be a much better listener and you'll get access to so much more information and knowledge that you would if you just try and pitch yourself. Yeah. Um, people, people don't respond well to that unless you know they're prepared, ready, and they're expecting someone to pitch to them. It's all about building relationships and networking is very much just the beginning of what should be an ongoing process to nurture relationships in order to create opportunities and ideas. So going straight in and being like, this is what I do, I can do this for you and you should buy from me, blah, blah, blah. People yeah. are just gonna shut down, especially especially women. We like to build long-term relationships even more so before we do business. Um, so make sure that you go in with the mindset of like, right, I wanna meet three new people at this event and I wanna learn something from each of them. So mm -hmm. what what is it you, you do? Who do you work with? How did you get into that role? What are you working on at the moment? And listen to what they're saying and ask more questions. And you might not be able to at that moment completely tell them everything there is to know about your business but they'll leave that conversation thinking it was fantastic because everyone loves to talk about themselves and they'll think that you're great because you genuinely listened to what they were saying yeah. and you were interested in what they were saying and um, so asking questions and networking with the mindset of trying to learn from others is it's a really great way to go about um about networking in general and it also helps if you can look to create um, what I call it like network diversity and creating um, a network and, and getting to know people that are outside of your area of expertise. So if you're an engineer, don't just network and speak to other engineers, network with people who are in tech and manufacturing and uh, the creative and arts and culture and really trying to understand what they do and see if there are any solutions or ideas that can be applied into your own industry to help you create these innovations that come from networking conversations as well. So again, asking questions and really genuinely listening to what people have mm -hmm. to say, that's the greatest start of any, of any new relationship that there is. Yeah, and I think you have touched on a very interesting point. And it's, yes, you have an objective for the networking, but the first touch point, let's say it, is about generating trust to then build a yeah. relationship that will sort of like be longer. But it's not necessarily about selling in the first conversation and trying to get a, a second meeting to keep selling. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. It's about building that trust and networking is no like and trust. People need to know you exist. They need to like you and they need to trust that you'll do what you say and that you're good at what you do in order to do business with you, but or to refer you to other people as well. And getting that trust at the beginning is really important. Like you say, and, um, it, it's such a, it's the strongest foundation you can have. And I think, you know, we build trust as humans on mutual interests and um, things that we have in common with people. So trying to find those little nuggets when you're talking to someone of things that you might have in common or things that you can talk about and share experiences with is a great way of building trust as well that really helps in the long run yeah absolutely and at the end of the day we're doing business but it, our humans they want doing businesses so that's sort of like understanding that yeah um well you were talking about like the strategic networking and sort of like having the questions ready do you think that we should have as an entrepreneur is like a networking toolkit you know sort of like okay this is my strategy like you create a marketing plan you create a sales plan should we create a networking plan absolutely that's what i'm like it's what i'm passionate about helping people to do but it's also what i kind of do at the minute on a consultancy level um currently building um I was just this week started to build I'm not building it myself I'm not a techie but I've got developers building a new platform I know they're amazing they do their thing um building a, a new platform that's going to empower people to make strategic decisions regarding which events they attend and 
you know, I've got a, a course on Udemy that's um, all about how to network strategically. And within that, there's um, some worksheets that are all about measuring that return on investment from your networking activities. So it's creating a strategy, knowing your objectives, knowing which events you need to be attending in order to meet those people to achieve those objectives. And then looking at that ROI. So looking at what your outputs are and outputs, yes, they're going to be the time and the financial stuff we talked about already, but outputs for networking are also things like making introductions and um, being proactive about your networking. So it's not just about physically going to an event online or offline, but it's about having other outputs. So, you know, introducing people across your network, sharing information across your network, um, having one-to-one -one catch ups with individuals, supporting individuals' social medias. So when someone that's in your network that you're trying to nurture a relationship with posts something, make sure that you like, comment and share it and engage with it to show that you're supporting them online as well. Um, so there's a lot of output activities that you can be doing and those should be measured. And then we can also look at what you're getting in return for for that and that could be in, in the form of new business but it's also introductions that are coming your way so people in your network that are introducing you to others in theirs mm -hmm. um one-to-one -one meetings that people are reaching out to you cold re people reaching out like that you've never met before that contact you because they've seen your content or they've been told about you or whatever it is so you can actually measure the outputs and then the inputs and um, and even though it's not as instant as social media mm -hmm. you don't have that data it is something that so important and so valuable and should be measured over a long period of time um, so it's an ever-evolving form and another arm to any kind of business development plan or strategy that you've got within your organization yeah that's very interesting because i think we don't really measure networking mm -hmm. and we should we, we should do it and yeah just to finalize this interview i would like to ask you how to take care of your network so do you, I mean, this is going to sound horrible, but do you put sort of like a tag or like, okay, this could be partners, this could be, I don't know, my support network and then sort of like have a follow up structure in place or how do you take care of your network? It's such a personal thing and each relationship's different and to categorize each person into one field is really tough because yeah. there's people in my network who I would go to for advice on their area of expertise, but also support in other areas and would ask their opinion on things. So it can be really complicated. Um, I would say that the best thing you can do to nurture your network is put time into it. Um, time is the most valuable thing we can give to anyone because we've all got a finite amount of it and we all know that um, so putting time into supporting people's social media like I say or just reaching out and having a chat catching up over one-to-one -one, um, making sure that you're sharing information across your network and really put yourself in the center of it in order to become someone who is then valuable for others to know so it's all about adding value to people yeah. um, um, and that's that's something that's really important. So it's very much about givers gain, which they do. You know, the more you give, the more you will get back. But going into networking, knowing that you're just going to give your time to these people, and that's everyone across the board. It doesn't matter or how valuable you see them. Everyone's human. Everyone has emotions and issues yeah. and you know, regardless of their job title or whatever, give everyone the same amount of respect, give everyone the same amount of time and put time into the relationships and that's what will nurture them in the long run. Yeah, and I think while you were speaking, it made me think that it's also about what do you want to share to the world? Because at the end of the day, you're providing value. I mean, of course, you want people to buy from you, but that's not the main reason you have created a business. So in your case, you're exactly. passionate about networking, you're passionate about helping people to get connections. And it's the same for me, you know, like I really want people to get connected. So it's thinking about networking, not only as a tool to create sales, of course, but also to build relationships to, yeah, to share what you have to show to people, to the world. Exactly, exactly. And it showcases you and it showcases what you're passionate about while doing that at the same time. And that, and it just has this massive knock on effect. And it's like the whole paint it forward. And, yeah. and it does it just, yeah, it's, it's a it's a legacy every time that you support people in your network, and that results in them doing business or them creating a new opportunity or that's part of your legacy that you're creating. And that's an impact, a positive impact that you're having on your network which you just can't buy that kind of PR or marketing or because it's, it's in people. So, yeah. 
Oh, thank you very much for this conversation, Jenny. I could speak for I know I loved it, Laura. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. <laughs>